Hi, welcome to the Lewis United Gallery and Studio uh, for another YouTube. I have to keep pausing and editing it because there's really bad traffic outside. Um, it sounds like waves crashing, but it's not. It's lorries passing. This video is going to be a continuation from the Lacey Papers video. And they're going to be much more representational, not the abstract stuff. It's not really my practice, but they, I understand that there's loads of really nice ways of using this stuff. So I was sort of presenting you with a whole lot of other ways you can use it. Because the potential of it is really nice. Um, and some of them are very delicate, give really lovely results. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy the video. And please remember to like and subscribe. Thank you. So we're going to be doing some geometric shapes and we're going to be doing the raindrops. And the things in my left hand were strings that I'd stuck down onto cellophane, put them into their forms with the cellulose glue and you can just lift them off the cellophane and use them. I'm using tissue paper and the cellophane and I'm using a crochet yarn, a dishcloth yarn for ply and the cellulose glue. And here when I lift the piece of paper up I am just making sure that the piece of paper, the tissue paper, is stuck down on the cellophane because I've done these in advance and they're already dry. I am now going to overlay them with others and I thought that if they were dry it would be so much easier. What I do, there's no glue on the threads. I get the cellulose glue and put it down on the piece of paper so it's quite sticky and then I just ease the thread round and one of the massive tips is to not try and do it with your fingers but to do it with a paintbrush. So obviously with them being dry, the first lot being dry, this next lot that's being overlaid on top of them to make the lovely patterns that the concentric rings make is a lot easier once they're dry as the ones underneath are going to be fixed. So anything that you're going to sort of layer and get complex, it's worth putting it to one side, you know, putting a load on, putting them to one side and let them dry and then go on and do some more. And you just look at your design, see what's necessary and do it as much as you think's necessary and then cut it off. Um, I leave them open but you can do it however you want and obviously a good thing to do is to use good scissors. <laughs> This was one that I had already done on a piece of cellophane. So I just worked it out on a piece of cellophane first. And it, when you lift them off the cellophane, they remain in these lovely concentric shapes. They hold their form a bit, so they're a lot easier to do. But it still takes time. I mean, you can decide whether you want to do it straight onto the paper or not. I alternate the way that the circle goes, whether it's clockwise or anti-clockwise. I've used tissue paper, the uh, dishcloth yarn, cellulose glue, um, and all these things are listed in my description below with links to suppliers, because I get a percentage of the sale, if a very, very small percentage of the sale, if you buy, and many of them also offer a 10% discount to you, so it is worth having a look. The other thing is with these is, you know, you're deciding on your design and how far you want to go, but I always find that sort of more detail with this sort of thing really really works. It's like having really lovely detail on a garment. It just seems to make it more finished and more polished and and more as if there's just huge amounts of hard work in it. So you've got these beautiful designs of drops of water landing on water. and I lift them, put them to one side to dry. And then when they're dry, I sort out the second layer. So I just glue up my tissue paper with a methyl cellulose 
which again is in the description below and I fold it over with the cellophane and then when I pat it down I'm not damaging the tissue so much lift the cellophane off carefully and I was just going to show you that you can patch it up I it wasn't big enough but it really doesn't matter you know the extra density of tissue paper makes no difference in the end that one wasn't dry obviously so just again it's not a problem you just reconfigure it and then put your piece of tissue paper over but again if it's dry when you put the tissue paper over all your design is more likely to stay in place so just make sure it's all glued down and I'm releasing it from the cellophane a bit there just to make it easier oh no I know what I do I'm releasing it from the cellophane here because I know I've got to cut it because I want to do two different examples for you if you can wait, leave it to dry and then cut it, you're far less likely to damage it because when it's wet, it's much more vulnerable. And that's why I've just wiped over a load of water onto it to make the papers wet again because this was fundamentally dry or basically dry. I've sprayed it with water or brushed water over it to make it wet so that it's vulnerable again and easier to press this tool through which is a blunt but hard instrument it's a palette knife and I'm just scraping through as I did in the lacy papers video beforehand scraping through and removing the tissue you don't even have to take it away you're just squashing it to one side really and even the bits that you sort of drag off and even the bits that you move and leave in place seem to add to the whole thing especially when it's painted it just gives it more texture and more um, organic feeling to it so you remove the bits that you think are necessary until you're happy with the design and happy with what it looks like um, and that's it you've done that one I'm now going to do the same to the geometric design I'm just going to show you what I did I just cut a few pieces, and again, useless scissors, go and get some good scissors. Cut a few lengths, and they were not the same lengths, they're all different. And in this case, I just do this lovely sort of crisscross design. Do the same thing, glue it down, it's not the threads that are glued. And then put it down in your design. And this was just, you know, to see what sort of effect you get with the different types of designs. And your design can be anything, can't it, with this? What happens is you end up with a piece of paper that is both a lovely thing in itself and can be made lacy and is surprisingly strong because the actual threads themselves become a binding. Uh, they bind the paper together. So I'm just putting a bit of making sure everything's down and then do exactly the same as I did with the one before. Bung a load of glue on the leftover bit of tissue paper and gently fold it over with the cellophane. And again, I'm going to patch this piece too because I obviously didn't leave enough cellophane um, tissue paper to cover the piece. Got carried away and made the piece bigger than I thought it was going to be. Put a bit of glue on there that was all fixed down because it was dry cut it off and again I'm going to release this divide it into two so that I've got a piece I can make lacy examples of and a piece that I can just paint for you to see at the end right, stick it all down and put it to one side to dry oh no I don't again um, wet it to make the paper vulnerable again and then ease out with your blunt but hard palette knife you're just scraping through to remove the paper and some of it I actually come you know release as a lump and take away but most of it I just fold back on itself and again you see because of the lines of your design you get a really different look to your lace and again it's up to you how you work this put it all to one side to dry and then you end up with these so both the lacy ones and the actual papers 
when they're dry they're really nice and strong much stronger than you imagine I think you could just put them as a page into a journal as they are these ones that aren't very good shapes and sizes but you can adjust that yourself I put it all down on cellophane again just because it all the glues are activated again when you wet them because it's water soluble glue so when you mix the acrylics with water you are going to activate your glues and then with this one just to remain pretty um, traditional I'm using blues and greens on this one so it's just blues and green acrylic watered down um, and I've got a bit of white there as well and I begin doing this I mean I haven't done this before so this is the first time I've done this and I begin doing this with a small paintbrush um, and I go on to using a much bigger one not not only is it faster but the bigger one seems to brush it over the shapes better and it actually catches on the protrusions nicely but it's you know you'll see they both have a nice effect at the very end of this I get some greens and I just sort of touch around the actual circles and make the actual raindrop circles a bit more prominent so that one I just moved to one side and put to one side I took away the cellophane at this point so that you could see it better I was worried it was reflecting too much light back at you so this is painted just onto the paper and this time I'm using sort of yellows ochres and the blues again I wanted nice earthy colours, I'm very into earthy colours at the moment. So I use both whites and um, the diluted paint. I make it so that it's very quiet, and I do like it quiet, but of course you can bung as much or as little paint as you like. What's really interesting this, which I didn't really think about, was that it creates quite a nice stencil. When you lift it up, you'll see it creates really nice forms underneath. That, that was by, purely by chance. Oh, just then I just put it on a piece of cellophane to dry because as I said, the glue has been activated. On this one, I've overdone the white, but again, you would be surprised how strong the paper is and I just was able to wipe it off with a piece of cloth. Well, I've got a piece of good tissue paper. So I've kept it really quiet again um, and this time I suddenly thought what would be really nice is to paint the other side as well because as I said earlier in the video these pa pages are much stronger than you think and would in fact just go straight into a, a handmade journal they'd be one of the signatures sewn in. So I'm just letting you have a look at that one there. Right, last one. And this one, I'm, again, you'd be surprised how little colour you need for it to work. But that's up to you, that's your decision, isn't it? And again, I'm doing both sides. And they be, turn out into this incredibly beautiful substance. You'd be amazed. And they feel good as well, they feel so nice. So there's another one done put it to one side to dry on the cellophane. And then that was the first one. I'm just bunging something on the back of that because I realise they're lovely if you colour both sides. And anything you put on that's too harsh or too intense you can get off with a cloth. And I went a little bit more green on this one. Oh, and when I did this I allowed the ochre to really get caught in the threads and the protrusions of it and it worked beautifully. Oh, I slowed it down a bit just to show you at this end bit. And I'm adding bits of green and bits of um, ochre there just to show you what the colours, you know, the more colours you add it seems to make these lovely subtle transitions it makes these beautiful papers. Well, I really hope you like it. I hope you get something from it. I think they're wonderful. And the last bit of the video, I'm just going to show you the whole lot finished and together all together. 
and dry. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. I hope you get something from it. There's more of these to come in the next couple of videos. Thank you for watching and see you again. All the best.